Salute de Schipoli. Today we're going to be discussing the Roman house or the domus. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the various rooms in the typical Roman domus and what their primary use was. After you watch this video, you should be able to describe the main use of each room in a typical Roman house, a domus, and also be able to label that room on a floor plan of a Roman house. Previously in Latin 1, we talked about various types of housing in ancient Roman society, and one of the things that we talked about was the difference between the vila and the domus. Go ahead and pause the video while you come up with your shortlist. What do you remember from Latin 1? What is the difference between a vila and a domus? In Latin 1, we discussed that the vila is a large estate, usually a house and a farm in the country house. And typically, a vila is going to have a large open floor plan. It will be worked by slaves directed by a vila cus overseer, who is typically a slave, him or herself. And it's the slaves who are going to farm the land and raise the livestock. And then the vila is also frequently a summer or a vacation home for a Roman family coming from the city. Here's a typical layout of a vila. You can see the living quarters of the Roman family surrounded by a number of agricultural areas as well as a storage area. And then the surrounding land which would be farmed or where livestock would be kept. Now, there were many different types of vila, ranging from the vila rustica, your basic country house and farm, all the way to the vila maritima, this very large, incredibly complex vila that was typically located next to the sea. The domus, on the other hand, is located in the city and there is usually a lot less space. Now, that doesn't mean to say that a domus could not be a sprawling complex, and this is especially the case if you were particularly wealthy, where the domus would have a variety of sizes based on the wealth of the person who owned it. A domus is typically going to have a garden and a covered walkway inside of the house, so kind of like putting your backyard inside your house, and it's going to be richly decorated to impress others. Within a domus and in the city setting, within the city setting there is something called a client-patron relationship, and typically the patron, the owner of the house, would invite his various clients to his home in order to discuss business. And as the patron, the domus would need to be spectacularly decorated in order to show off his prestige. Finally, just a nota bene, domus can also mean the various people in the family, i.e. the household itself, and this does also include the slaves who live and work in the domus, the city house. So here you can see a modern reconstruction of a typical domus. And here, a typical layout of a domus. Now, Discipli, this is what your layout will look like, except for blank. And one of your tasks will be to label each of the rooms within the house with the Roman term for the room. Additionally, you'll also have to be able to describe what each room was used for. But we're going to go through each of these rooms one by one. So to skip leave, for each room, I'd like you to listen as I read a description of the room in Latin. After I read that description, I'd like you to pause the video and then jot down what you think that room is in English or describe and write down what you understood from the Latin. Afterwards, we'll discuss each room and I will show you where it's located in a typical domus layout. First, our first room in a typical Roman domus is the taberna. In taberna est venditor. Venditor non in familia est, et non in domu habitat. Tabernae habent multas bonas, arma, vestimenta, libros, cibum. Viri et feminae ad tabernas veniunt, et dant pecuniam, Venditori. Go ahead and pause the video and jot down what you think this room is. 
Now, to skip on the video, you will now see the location of the tabernai. Typically, the tabernai or the shops were located in the front of a Roman domus. Now, this is something that is a little bit different than a typical modern day house. Most houses do not have shops in the front of it. The Roman house would kind of serving a double feature, both a living quarters as well as a shop. Now, the Roman family who lived in the domus could either work in the taberna themselves or they could rent out this space to other merchants. And one thing that is important to note down that this wall does not have any access to the domus itself. So the tabernae are completely closed off from the rest of the house and only have entrance to and from the via, which is located just out front. Our next rooms in the house are the Janua et Fau case. And remember to pause the video after you listen to the description in the Latin. In Janua, Janitor stat, Janitor familium custodit, et Januam purgat. Diende viri in domum per fauces ambulant. Discipli on the video, you'll see the typical locations of the Janua and the Faucase. The Janua is a term that you should be familiar with from Latin 1, and it means the front door. This is where the custodian or the doorkeeper would stand in front of in order to guard the Roman family. And then finally, as you enter the house, you'll go through the Janua, enter something called the Westibulum, which is a term that's not on your vocabulary list. It means entryway. And then finally enter the foul case or the hallway. Now the foul case actually literally means throats. And as you can see, if we're to pretend that this is a mouth, the foul case is the throat into the interior of the house. Our third room in the Roman domus is the atrium. In atrio, dominus sedet, et amicos expectat, atrium habet picturas polcras. Amici et clientes ad atrium veniunt, ibi dominus salutant, Et dicunt omnia cum amicis. Discipli, here you'll see that the atrium is the central main room in the Roman house. It's much akin to our living room. It's a conversation area. In addition to being the location where a patron, the head of the household, would typically be greeted by his clients. So he would also conduct some small affairs of business inside the atrium. The next two areas of the house are the impluium and the compluium, which are both located in the atrium. In atrio est impluium et compluium. Pluviae carunt ex caelo et per compluium. Diende impluium est plenus pluviarum et aquarum. Discipli, here you'll see the compluvium and the impluvium labeled on your map of the Roman domus. The compluvium and the impluvium are both located in the atrium and they're represented by this series of rectangles in the middle of the atrium. Now, they both are located in the same area. However, they're located in different altitudes of the atrium. The compluvium is the hole in the roof through which rainwater falls. And then the impluvium is the pool of water that the rainwater is being collected in. 
As you know from your aqueducts video, most Roman houses did not have a private water usage or they would typically need to pay to have water hooked up to their house. And so the vast majority of Romans, whether they lived in a domus or in an insula apartment building, they would collect rainwater if and when it did rain for their own personal use. The next room in our house is the cubiculum. Sunt molta parva cubicula in domu. Familia saipe dormit in cubiculis. Sed non semper. Quod domus molta cubicula habent, vestimente aut libri, aut arma in cubiculis esse possunt. Discipli, here you'll see a number of cubicula located on our layout of the Roman domus. You'll notice that they all have question marks, and that's because all of these small rooms surrounding the atrium and surrounding this larger area in the back of the house were possibly cubicula. The Roman bedroom or cubiculum was typically a very small room in the Roman house and it was used mostly just for sleeping. Now because there were so many small rooms within a Roman domus, some of these cubicula might not be true bedrooms but more in the nature of large closets or storage areas. The next areas in our Roman domus are the ala and the lararium. Alae sunt Partis corpus avium. Quid? Hic est avis? Hic est ala. Hmm. In una ala est lararium. In lararium, familia deis orat, et cibum et vinum deis dat. Discipli, here you'll see on the floor plan of the Roman domus the ala and the lararium listed. Now the ala are typically referred to as the wings of the house and I realize that you are likely concerned during our description because ala is a word that literally means the wings of a bird in addition to this particular area of a Roman house. So what I'd like for you to do is pretend for just a moment that there is a bird flying in our Roman domos and as you can see as we are detailing this bird that both of the ala are taken up by the wings of the bird, hence the name. So you'll translate these as the wings of a house, quite literally. It is within one of the ala, it didn't matter which one, that we would find the lararium or the shrine to the household gods, the lares et penates in the ancient Roman world. And it is here that the Roman family would worship and pray and give sacrificial offerings such as food or wine to their gods. The next room that we have in our Roman domus is the triclinium. Familia edit in triclinio. Servicibum et aquam ad mensam portant, Dominus cum amicis in triclinio edit et vinum bibet. Nonum quam sunt dua triclinia in domo, unum intra et alterum prope horto. Here you'll see the location of the triclinia within a Roman domus. Now for sure there's going to be one triclinium on the interior side of the domus just off of the atrium and that's because not all Roman domus would actually have this secondary part. Only the wealthier domi would have the secondary part. If you were wealthy, it's frequent that you would have a second triclinium. One would be used for business with your clientes, your clients, and the other would be used for private family meals. The next room in our house is the culina. Anquila in culina laborant et cibum parant. In culina domina anquila subet coquera et facera cibum. Culina calida est. Quod anquilae flamis coquit. 
this Ghibli, you'll see the location of the Kulina here in the corner. Typically, the Kulina is located off to one side because since all of the cooking needed to be done with a fire, the Kulina was typically a very hot place to be. So you wanted it located off to the side and typically further away from the bedrooms or the sleeping areas. And of course, this is the location in a domus or an awila where the mistress of the house would order the slaves to prepare the food. The next room in our house is the tablinum de Scipoli. Tablinum est ubi dominus laborant. Habet multos libros et stilos. Cornelius in tablino said it, quod necessa est legere et scribere mensam. Dominus irratus est. Ubi liberi in tablino non tacent. Discipli, here you'll see the location of the tablinum on our typical Roman layout of the domus. The tablinum is located right in the central area, and it is the office or the workroom of the master of the house. And this is particularly true if the dominus, if the master of the house had clientes that, it would, that he would be inviting over. As you can see, it's also open to the back area of the house if the domus did in fact have one. The next area of our house is the posticum. Posticum est ut Janua. Familia per Janoam domum intrat, sed modo servi in postico intrant. Here you'll see the location of the posticum or the servant's entryway, almost like a back door. Now, typically, it's only the family who's going to who's going to enter through the main Yanua or the front door. And then the servant's entrance, the posticum, is where the slaves, whether they lived within the house or just came to work at the domus every single day, that's where they would enter. And you'll notice that it is particularly close to the kulina. So it would be a very easy trip to the kulina for any of the servus who are working in order to make their way to their workstation without being seen by the familia who lived there. The next room in our house is the peristilium, dominus per peristilium ambulat, quod pulcrum est, in peristilio mater hortum habere amat, et statuas inter columnas, Habet. Videmus caelum, quod peristidium tectum non habet. Discipli, the peristidium is the main area of this second location if the family was wealthy enough to afford the back portion of a typical Roman house. And it is a garden area that typically had a covered walkway with columns alongside it. Here you can see the locations of the columnae. And this is the area of the house that's much akin to our backyard. The main difference, of course, being that the peristilium was located within the house as opposed to our backyards, which are outside of it. Now, with all of that said, it was open to the air. There's typically a hole in the roof as well in the peristilium to let in that air, that sunlight, and the birds and the bees. The next area in our Roman house is the latrina. In latrina, familia spongiam utitur, viri et femina in latrina separant. Nonum quam latrina prope fauces est, quod tubae aquae sub via currunt. And here you'll see a potential location or two potential locations of the latrina or the bathroom. One location would be far in the back of the house. And that's because, especially if running water were not hooked up in the Roman domus, this is potentially a smelly room of the typical Roman domus because of its function. 
The other frequent location of the latrina is near the front of the house, and they would just take away a little corner of one of the taberna and have the latrina located just off of the case hallway. And this is so that the tubes of water, which were required to hook the latrina up with running water, had much easier access to those that were outside running along the via or the street just outside the front door of the Roman domus. The last room that we have in a typical Roman domus is the Kella. Molti Romani servos habent. Si dominus servos habent, fortasse in Kella servi habitant et dormiunt. Discipoli, the Kella is the last room in a typical Roman house, and it is usually located in the very back of the domus to keep the servants and slaves away from the family's normal daily actions. And it is in the Kella that the slaves would spend the majority of their time when they weren't working, here spending time with their friends and families, and especially sleeping. And as such, the kella is usually translated to the servant's quarters. Discipoli, here you'll see all of the rooms in a domus along with a potential translation of each word. Remember that it is your task to remember the main use of all of these rooms in the domus, as well as being able to identify them on a blank layout of a Roman domus. Well, I say Discipoli.